When I first learned I had cancer, I was devastated. I was still a young man. I was in perfect health. Uh, I had had my annual physical. I heard a little extra sound in my heart. It's called a regurgitation. I felt a lump in the shower. And uh, just like my mom had felt a lump. I think anybody that ever experiences that feeling of having the security that they know taken from them, um, you know, it definitely rocks your world. You immediately think, oh, they must be talking to somebody else. How am I going to tell my wife I have cancer? The amazing thing to me was that I had no symptoms whatsoever. It's hard for me to believe that it's still taking so many of the people we love. Early detection is the key. Catch it early, you give the doctors and your healthcare team a really great chance of getting you through it. I tried to figure out what was missing in the messaging, one-to-one -one interaction, you know, my taking everybody's hand in this room and saying to them, you know, I really care about you. I want you to take better care of yourself. We've gone to colleges and to corporations and done health fairs, which is a very powerful thing. They can look in your eyes and know that this is an important action they need to take. It, for instance, when we were at George Mason for two years, we were able to sign up 400 students each year to receive our e-health reminder. Again, you know, the whole idea of this one-to-one -one communication is what we need to translate not only into our print, but into our social media. In 2011, Gina Grillo took me up to uh, Arnold Advertising, Arnold Worldwide in Boston. Pete Favat said to me, don't even make a presentation. I know what I want to do for an ad, a pro bono ad campaign for you. And he created an ad campaign that sort of stirred the pot a little bit. Cancer is in my family, so fear comes to mind. Mm -hmm. For me, it's like you never think it can happen. All different colors, all different nationalities, men, it's women, there's no discrimination. It hits me right at home. But I do have a little lump down there. I found it. Tracking myself. You can rely on doctors and, and friends and, and so forth, but at the end of the day, it's you who needs to make sure that you are safe and comfortable and that you know your own body. I, I think people just don't go that extra step. I think that it's a conversation that we don't have very often, and maybe we should be having that conversation. We are in such a crazed world in the advertising community. Everything is on deadline. Guess what? The ad can wait. The radio spot can wait. You know what can't wait? Keeping yourself alive. The, the best reasons, the very best reasons for self-check have nothing to do with yourself. They have to do with those people who love you, those people who depend upon you. Those are the reasons you should self-check. We've done an extraordinary amount of work for self-check. We're at a tipping point now, and that's one of the reasons why this evening is so important. Tonight, we are offering you Self-Check's Prevention Nation. It includes all of Self-Check's free Keeping Healthy tools that are just waiting for your creative minds to help us reach out and help save the millions of people who die unnecessarily each year. The invitation is open. So why not help spread this very important piece of communication about how important it is for people to be responsible and to empower people to really take good care of themselves, if not for themselves, then for the people that they love. We can talk about getting mammographies, and we can talk about awareness, and we can talk about all of these things. But the thing we don't realize is the power to cure is literally in your own hands. Stop being selfish and self-check. You hear the train coming in, Ali? You miss your daddy, don't you?